Hello Aquarius, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. So this is the second time I'm recording your reading. The first time I got all the way through it, but I felt like I rambled on and talked about things that didn't need to be talked about. And um, so I am doing it again because in between some other things were shown to me that have helped me to clarify this and hopefully I can be more direct. We begin with the energy of Chimera. Head of a lion, body of a goat, tail of a serpent or a dragon, depending on who you ask. A creature made up of disparate parts, but working as a functional and beautiful whole bringing in all of the different gifts of each animal. Uh, and the subtext here is synergy. The other card that wanted to come out is this heart chakra card. And at the bottom of this sacred geometry deck was synergy again. And I will read both of these. The frequency of the heart chakra, the green flower of life, supports our capacity to love deeply and unconditionally. The healing properties harmonize the mind and the body. The frequency of synergy supports our allowance and acceptance of not so obvious, never seen before combinations and unions that result in new ways of functioning, working, thinking, relating, loving, and being. It reminds us to embrace the unfamiliar so that new yet exciting co-creations can give birth to a new reality. And this is 41, which is five. And this card is 32, which is five. And the heart is the central chakra with root, sacrum and solar plexus below and throat, third eye and crown above. Um, it is also sort of the, the, although it may not be the technical center of the body, there may be you know, more below than above, but it is, we think of it as our center. When we point to ourselves, we point to the heart area, not to the head. It is the heart that can bring together those earthy lower chakras with the airy upper chakras. Now you are beginning with the high priestess. And she is a very airy sort of energy, even though she, she is associated with the moon. But it's not the priestess's job to get emotional about what she receives. She is a conduit. She receives information and she passes it on. The, uh, the Pythia, the seers and sibyls of the ancient world delivered their messages without bias for the most part. They had a message, they delivered. It is not theirs to question or um, to, to judge. And I think that you have been trying to achieve this. I think you've been wanting to become just a really clear channel. and focusing largely on those upper three, in fact, mostly the upper two chakras of crown and third eye. Maybe you've been uh, contemplating or meditating deeply and for long periods of time. Maybe you've been doing other rituals that are sort of meant to open you up to 
cosmic or source information. But under your card is this Knight of Cups. And he's here, arriving with this cup, but you, you are ignoring him. You can't see him, actually. You are blind to his arrival, to his efforts to give you this cup. And this is something I think you've really been working on. That you've kind of made it your job. Uh, if you watch the Scorched Earth Tarot channel, Carrie talks about the pentacles as being uh, not just physical currency, but energetic currency as well. And I think that that is what kind of what you're working on here. This is ethereal work, even though the, the pentacle card is coming up. I believe that what you're striving for is the ability to just act spontaneously and intuitively. As this queen of wands can do. That is the, the Aries, the heart flame kind of idea that you can, you can be so in tune that you can just act spontaneously. For Jung, the fire signs were intuition because of that instantaneous communication, a kind of clear cognizance. But I think that what you're doing is actually counterproductive. And that it is in fact causing you to be more just in your head. There's this defensiveness, this uh, not just efforting, but battle that seems to be going on. And it's possible, it's possible that you don't know it. Um, again, because you are in this high priestess blinders on, uh, frame, you may not even realize that you're actually fighting against something, which is the cup, the the Holy Grail, your heart, and the cup offered by source. But you are wary of the cup, Aquarius. This page of swords is wary, on the alert, defensive. So many reasons for that. The possibility of past pain and hurt. Um, a lack of self-trust. I have to get outside validation from a sign, from a synchronicity, from a download. You know, what's coming from me directly is, is impure, is tainted, is... Um, Irrational, even perhaps, you know, the card that was on the bottom of the um, deep, dark, dangerous Oracle deck is chaos. And you, Aquarius, you're so interesting. You are the water bearer, so you bear this vessel filled with water. But the water is contained, there's control around the water. And then you're this dichotomy of Uranus and Saturn energy 
of electric, innovative individuality and uh, structured order that wants to come through. And you can, as uh, other signs that have a sort of a strong intellectual component, you can get up in your head and distrust the heart. Although actually, you know, as a society, we kind of, we distrust the heart. Generally head over heart is what we learn. You know, we can pay attention to what the, you know, the heart wants and, and that's nice. But ultimately we have to go with logic and reason. That's the way to get ahead and, and also to be safe. This intellectual, um, sword based, uh, kind of approach that's sometimes thought of also as masculine is one of control in an attempt to create security, right? That's Saturn gone wrong. Whereas this, this sort of chaos energy can be in fact chaos where we're lost and non-functional and everything is crazy, or it can simply be loose, open, the quantum field. What is often thought of as feminine energy, that water that's sloshing around in your container. So there's a call here, Aquarius, in this reading to stop that. We get this new no more games card. And I, what I want to say that this is about is leaving this chessboard. Uh, chess is absolutely a symbol for an intellectual pursuit and for trying to control, to think 12 moves ahead. Leave the chessboard. Life is not chess. Instead, what we have is here, you in your red dress. The invocation, the dance, the call of the heart. And this card says hideout, but I think it's more about home, right? Coming back to the center of things. Coming back to yourself, to your own center, to your heart center, to the wholeness of yourself, to the synergy of mind, body, and emotions. You know, we, we split these things up a few hundred years ago, and we're trying to bring them back together but we still see them as separate. And this is kind of, oh, the paradoxical thing. The seeing their different qualities, but at the same time, knowing that they are all part of one whole thing. This chimera functions as a whole being, in spite of the fact that it's made up of a lion, a goat, and a snake. Those parts are all the chimera.
this division of heart, mind, soul, it has its uses, but it's also an obstacle. So this Ten of Cups, this rainbow fulfillment that I think we all want. We may have different ideas of how, how we can get there and, and what constitutes this for us. For someone, it might be, you know, living in the same place for their entire life. For someone else, it might be globe hopping. So there's different ways that this can come through for us, but ultimately we want to be happy. Yeah. We want to feel good. We want to feel connected. We want to feel whole. We want to feel fulfilled and satisfied. We want to have um, satisfying relationships with other people that feel good and are nourishing and supportive and challenging too. That's another way to think of the synergy of you and your friends. You and your kith and kin as synergistic. And so we get this three of pentacles, the other synergy card, with the tarot card of collaboration. And here, including a bunch of water. It's a pentacle card that includes a lot of water and air with these butterfly and moth wings. And there's even sort of a sense of fire because the, the, the pentacles are golden. Uh, the moon is glowing inside its bottle there. All the elements coming together to create synergy in different ways. Now you may, in fact, this could be, this reading could be about your entire life, about how you approach everything that you do. Or, and or, there may be some particular project that you are involved in starting a business, changing a business, uh, doing something at your work, uh, building a house, figuring out where to live next, uh, raising a family, all these different things. And the suggestion here is to look at disparate elements. Is there something you've rejected? Because it looked like it didn't fit. How could you put a lion head on a goat's body? but maybe you can. Because what we have here is the page of pentacles, the eternal student, the beginner's mind. The willingness to learn, the willingness to be a novice. And on the bottom of this deck is the Queen of Swords. That clarity, that discernment of mind. I think you can't, we, I think we cannot reach this space that we want, this space of openness and spontaneity and, you know, the ability to, to know what to choose every time something comes up, of knowing what to do next, of living really in flow. Unless we see ourselves as a whole, unless we allow these different elements to, to come into synergy,
So this Nine of Pentacles is, you know, is about personal sovereignty and personal management of resources. And as we've said of both physical and energetic management of pentacles. And she is, she is relaxed here at her piano in the woods. This is not a striving, um, efforting sort of energy. She is in flow here. And the, the energies that may be getting in the way of this, the Seven of Wands reappears. And in this case, a very, you know, deliberate one-on-one -on -one battle, perhaps between heart and mind, between fire and air, or fire and water. If, if you've been hurt in the past, and I think that, that you don't reach adulthood without having that experience, then you may end up extra cautious with your heart space. You may spend a lot of time thinking, 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 polishing those thoughts. and the Seven of Swords. And while you're down here, polishing your thoughts, there's this amazing thing happening. There's this, what I think could be a sunrise and this swan is just saluting the sun. Having this gorgeous moment, but you're not seeing any of it because you're down here polishing this one particular sword. So the, um, the option here, what's the option? What's, what's the way out? Well, as it often is with a sign, the way out is the other way, is the opposite end of the axis. Leo, strength. And the Leo again appearing as the head of the chimera. the heart-based choice. Allowing, allowing that emotional self to combine with the mental self. Not thinking of them as separate, but thinking of them as part of the same whole. So we get the Isle of Wonders here. And it says, Revelation, Teaching, Discovery. And to get to the Isle of Wonders, you have to enter the water. And there's no boat here. You have to swim. You have to enter the waters and be perhaps submerged. To allow yourself to be submerged in yourself. To spend less time trying to hear something from the cosmos and more time with yourself. You are, you're an extension of source. In a way, everything that you could ever learn is here with you. Certainly for your own life. 
You may not have the answers for somebody else's life. That's that's their thing. But for, for your own life, the answers are here with you. In you, in the wholeness of you. And the card that came out is the gift. And this is interesting in two ways. One, because we have green here, this greenness calling to this heart chakra card. Uh, present, honoring, offering, pray, being present with yourself. But also because this card came out for Virgo. Not in the most recent reading that I just posted yesterday. Um, came out this morning, actually. I'm sorry. The Virgo reading came out this morning as I'm recording this. But also because Asteroid Chimera is in Virgo at the moment. And Aquarius and Virgo, you have things in common with each other. Um, Virgo is the airiest of the Earth signs. Mercury is your dispositor. And your mutable Earth. The most changeable Earth. And um, I don't have uh, any Aquarius placements, but I do have Virgo placements. I totally identify with getting up in the head, um, wanting to know for sure, wanting to have a map laid out to have 12 moves ahead. Perhaps overanalyzing. So I do, I'll, I'll link the Virgo reading below uh, and you can go watch it if you think uh, it might be of use to you. Um, I don't know about the Chimera asteroid, I've mentioned it. It might have some meaning for you. Um, it's currently at about 19 degrees of Virgo, which may mean something. Um, it's not gonna actually reach Virgo until December of 2024. So it's, because um, it has a, its own retrograde period. And that may mean something, December, around December 23rd of 2024. So just to insert those things in case, in case they have meaning for you. So advice. And it's interesting to me, the, the advice is the fifth deck, which is Aleister Crowley's brainchild. And he certainly was a heady person himself, but uh, and interestingly, he had Saturn and Uranus opposing in his chart. And they might even have been Uranus and Aquarius and Saturn and Leo, but don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. I didn't look. And he talks about... Um, do as thou wilt is the whole of the law. That's an often quoted Crowleyism. But it is love and will combined. Not just any old will. So we begin, interestingly, with the priestess. So, think about how you connect, how often you connect, 
Um, this priestess does include a bunch of earthy things, flowers and a camel down here at the bottom. These earth and water um, symbols. She is very connected to earth and sky. And then below her are the Emperor and the Queen of Wands. Certainly for Crowley, Aries energy. And Aries, this fire, like Leo, it's kind of a, I mean, Aries has more of a head fire kind of thing going on, but a word for Aries is courage, which comes from the heart, the French word for heart, cur. So to have the courage to get in the water. Have the courage, perhaps, in your project to combine things that, that normally people think don't go together. To hire somebody who seems totally wrong on paper, but feels right. And of course, the cup. <laughs> Take the cup. Aquarius. <laughs> and this cup that is um, sort of extra fabulous and has a kind of star quality to it. Honor those parts that you have locked away and have ignored because you are wary of them. Because you aren't, you will not be able to reach this highly intuitive, spontaneous flow state unless you have synergy of your whole being and you aren't ignoring any parts of yourself. And then the tower, because of course, if we don't have the corpse, we have the tower. And that's again courage, the courage to dismantle something, to go against uh, received wisdom, to start your business in some weird way that people think is crazy, um, to hire somebody that doesn't seem to be appropriate to go live in a place that people think you won't like but feels right it may require dismantling something and then wealth the ten of pentacles the tree of life There was a previous reading for you um, Aquarius where you were asked to allow your own power and I know we've had some readings for you where the magician figured strongly and this card in this tradition is Mercury in Virgo. So Mercury in his home space of Virgo. And again, that Virgo connection of earthy mind or airy earth, depending on how you want to look at it. of two things that seem disparate. 
but work together. So courage, courage is called for. Courage. To do the unexpected, to do the unusual, to do the weird, to be successful, to be individual, to be happy, to be satisfied, to be whole. So I wish you all the very best, Aquarius. I think if you allow this synergy of your wholeness, that amazing things will come. I will see you next time. So long, Aquarius.